What up folks, Fabio here, my friends call me Fobster. Welcome back to the channel. And this video is going to be part one of my collection update video. And yes, I know, part one. Well, I ran into some trouble uploading the footage via Google Drive and lost three segments that I'm gonna have to reshoot. So, rather than missing a Mezco Monday upload, I thought it'd be best to just give you part one and then give you the rest later this week ahead of the season two premiere of Bobster Live coming next week. So please enjoy this first part of my 2022 Mezco 112 collection update. And make sure you give this video a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe so that you don't miss part two coming later this week. Thanks guys, I'll see you soon. All right, here we go. And to start us off, I really wanted to show you guys a wide shot of the bookcases where I keep all of my boxes for my Mezco 112 Collective collection here. And this is something you see in the background of all my videos, of all my streams. I wanted to take you guys in order from the right, which is basically what you do see most of the time on my stream, and then move left as we get into the detolfs, which are over here on the left. But since you guys see most of this behind me, I always get asked how I organize everything and where everything is arranged. And the way that I kind of have it is that I have all my DC stuff on the left one here. I have all the Marvel stuff on the middle one here. And everything miscellaneous is going to be on the right here with a little bit of Rumble Society here on top. And then the entire top is Rumble Society. And you'll see that theme recurring throughout my actual DTOF display as well, where I have my DC on the left, Marvel on the right, and then kind of miscellaneous stuff off by itself to the side as well over here. But you'll see that when we get into the actual DTOFs. Since I do get asked about how I organize the bookshelves a lot, I wanted to give you guys this wide shot so you can get a feel for it, and that'll kind of set the stage from when we move into the actual display. We'll move in a little bit closer right here, and I'll take you guys through all of the different boxes right here and show you how I kind of have them organized as well. So starting off on my right bookcase here, you'll see I got the Rumble Society stuff here on top and some of my miscellaneous stuff. This is really where the miscellaneous shelf starts here. So we'll move there, and then we'll move back up to Rumble Society when the time comes, but... The arrangement for this shelf right here is literally by color of boxes. I like the thought of Space Ghost flowing into Star Trek with the two yellows, and then Star Trek turns blue and then turns dark and then goes into the two black boxes for Frankenstein. I actually did recently get the regular edition black and white Frankenstein this year for my birthday, so shout out to my friend Frank, my plug here locally, who uh, actually got that for me, very appropriate. So I, I had that spot open for him for the longest time, and I was able to neatly slide the box in when the time came and that was a very, very satisfying moment. So that's kind of what that arrangement is on this shelf. It's literally kind of by color. And that moves down into my like miscellaneous live action horror. Uh, it starts with Popeye here. Again, there's a little bit of color arrangement going on here. So mind the OCD, but you know, we start with the Popeye box, which is white. Then it goes into Clockwork Orange, which is also white. And then I like the thought of the two like half heads next to each other. So that kind of goes into the uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead. And that moves us into our horror section here. We got the Michael Myers and the Ash from Evil Dead 2, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, Pennywise, and then into Dr. Zayas, which isn't technically horror, but hey, so is, I mean, I guess Alex DeLarge isn't technically horror either, even though it is Stanley Kubrick. But again, this is all just kind of arranged by color slash release date, you know, or release time. So Dr. Zayas is the latest one. So he's all the way on the end, kind of bringing us back around to the miscellaneous side of things outside of horror. But then that moves down here into Conan, which is, of course, if you saw my video last week, number one figure of 2021 from Mezco and maybe across the entire industry for a lot of people. So he's here bringing up the, the beginning of this shelf into Diabolic, which is equally as miscellaneous. I guess not really a category per se for him, but that gets us into the Judge Dredd stuff, which, of course, is some of the earliest figures in the 112 line I've had. These basically since release, the uh, Lawmaster and then the regular edition of Judge Dredd. But since then, I've gone back and decided to backtrack and get some of the ones that I had missed earlier. First, the PX one, which you'll see on the display pretty soon. And then recently, most recently, right before I started shooting this, in fact, I got the New York Comic Con 2015 exclusive black and white Judge Dredd. So I'm excited to show you guys that in the display. And then one more shelf down, we have my uh, Popeye there kind of. Originally, I had the Popeyes like flowing down off on the left side here where I had the two-pack there, but then once Conan came in and filled this up, I moved the Popeye two-pack down, but Popeye, you know, here starting up on the left, and then that moves into some of like the more deluxe tins for some of the other miscellaneous releases. So we got the Hellboy PX right here, which is sitting on top of the regular Hellboy. We got the Ghostbusters, Warriors and John Wick there. These are kind of like weirdly sized boxes, so they are sticking up off the shelf, but hey, you don't see them on camera, so who cares during my streams, right? 
Uh, and then that brings us into the bottom shelf, which is just more random miscellaneous stuff, not uh, across a bunch of different categories from the Mezco line in general. So we have a couple of five point sets right here, Ultraman and Popeye. We have the Mezitz Batmobile with the 89 Batman. And then a vintage shop near me had one of these old Mezitz sets. This is the uh, Alien from 1979. Uh, really old Mezitz set, probably from like 2001 or 2002. I don't quite remember, but an early Mezco release for sure. And then along with that, I have another early Mezco release, which is the original Captain Nemo cabin control version. So one day I hope to break that out and have the 112 Captain Nemo displayed along with it inside of the cabin. And that'll be really cool. And then on the right, kind of bringing up the side of the bookcase here is a couple of the uh, Mezco Con boxes. You got the Toys Fair and the Summer Con 2020, the Fall Con 2020, and then the Summer Con 2021 box right here. Um, and that goes into the Advent calendar there. And these are the Rumble Society boxes that have that magnetic closure that they've done for a few of like the quote unquote standard Rumble Society releases outside of like the deluxe tins and all that stuff. And that'll bring us up into the top right there where I have a bunch of the other Rumble Society stuff. But before we get into that, I will move through the other cases over here on the other side. But while we're here, I wanted to kind of pan through and show you guys some of the artwork that I have framed from Mezco. This is all of the Doc Nocturnal artwork. The poster on the left was originally at DesignerCon 2019, one of the last shows I went to before the pandemic. So that's a screen printed poster, very nice texture, but I went ahead and I actually had a frame already that fit it perfectly. So I went ahead and put that inside of the frame and then that started this entire framing spree that I've been on with a lot of the Mezco artwork. So once the actual Doc Nocturnal came in, I put his comic slash magazine or whatever it's called into a frame, found a certificate frame for the uh, Phantom Knight certificate as well. And then this is the trading card set that came with Doc Nocturnal um, expansion kit as well. So that's all of the trading cards from that set framed up. I like how that looks a lot. Again, this framing spree did continue when they put out the individual full-size poster cards, I, I guess. They're like basically more sets of the cards, but in full poster size. So I had to go ahead and get those framed as well. So this is what I call my Doc Nocturne wall. <laughs> oh, I slay me. But yeah, I really do like how this stuff looks all framed up. I would absolutely hate to just have these free form and, you know, put holes in them with tacks or something like that. Really do enjoy how this looks all framed up. That's going to bring us into the middle bookshelf that has my Marvel stuff. These are all of the uh, MDX releases that have that smaller box. Um, they've started doing that with some of the regular releases now, but originally, obviously, these were all MDX releases. A lot of the variants that were con exclusives or online exclusives, they're in that smaller box. So I decided to make the top shelf that so that it can sit a little bit smaller and then the bigger shelves can fit the bigger boxes below there. So these are a lot of the variants. I mean, you can tell what they are by the side, so I won't read into all of them. I will say that the top row right here are all the live-action Spider-Man versions, so you can see the, the texture from each of the different suits on there. Actually, these two are the live-action Spider-Man, and then this one is the Vigilante suit Daredevil, which I think flows nicely with the regular Shadowlands Daredevil. There's like a little bit of that going on as far as the color arrangement goes, but for the most part, they are kind of based on release order slash how they're arranged on the shelves below. So it kind of goes from... Daredevil to Punisher to Spider-Man and so on into the other ones as we move down the shelf. And moving down the shelf again, we got some of the Marvel boxes. These are arranged basically by how early they were in the line. These six right here are some of the earliest in the line. So they have that original box design with the magnetic closure before they started doing just the single sleeve cover on top of it. And there's the two versions of Punisher, Captain Rogers and Captain America and the Daredevil. And then right there is where it changes into the new box design. So we added Spider-Man and Iron Man, Red Skull there, moving down. This is basically all X-Men characters, except for the 2099, which I added obviously earlier this year. So he's kind of the odd one out there, but that's because I ran out of room on this top shelf, even on the back row behind it. You can't really fit any more of these boxes. I'm officially out of space, so I'm just kind of fitting them wherever I can at this point. But the original intention behind this shelf right here was it was all X-Men characters. Obviously, from Deadpool, the two versions. One is the MDX with the head pool and then the regular standard version. All of the X-Men characters into Magneto. And then again, Spider-Man 2099 there on the end. And then moving down, just like I did with Dread on this shelf, the kind of oversized boxes I've put all in this like third shelf from the bottom. And here we have the Inhuman set with Lockjaw and Black Bolt. Here's the Comic-Con exclusive Captain America, the classic version that just kind of sits neatly on top of there. I wish I could display it with the star side facing forward, but 
Again, I'm basically out of space, so I'm just trying to fit them wherever I can. And then some other miscellaneous kind of Midnight Suns street-level heroes right here on this shelf as well. Felt appropriate to have Doctor Strange next to Black Bolt, little Illuminati. And then as we move down, these are all of the PX versions on this shelf, which you see continues from the DC shelf as well. So these are the PX tins, starting with the fully loaded Punisher, and then moving into all of the other ones. Again, it's sort of a mirroring order to how they are from the top as we go from... Spider-Man to Doctor Strange to Iron Man, and then into the X-Men stuff, again, to mirror how they were arranged on the shelves above here. So a lot of that kind of symmetry and synergy going on here, all to satisfy my own OCD. And then at the very bottom is all the live-action Marvel releases. So the Thor Ragnarok, all three of them are actually in a row facing, like, in, as you go into the shelf, and then that flows into Black Panther and Captain Marvel and Spider-Man, Daredevil, and Punisher from Netflix, and then the Far From Home, Stealth Suit, Night Monkey, Spider-Man. And the reason I have the Thor Ragnarok ones just like this is because they all have the same logo on the spine, so it makes a little bit more sense to just have the one logo facing forward like that, and then from there, all of the other ones have different logos flowing into the rest of the shelf. And now to start off the DC shelf over here, this is the bookcase on the left. Um, you'll see that, again, I tried to mirror the same kind of thing. I, again, used to only have these two billies, so everything else has kind of been a middle out sort of thing that I've done with it. So the older boxes are in the middle of the middle shelf, essentially, or the second from the top shelf. And so they kind of expand outwards from there. So to mirror how I had Punisher over here with like the two line design boxes that they started with before they completely abandoned it, moving into the rest of them. I've done the same with the Joker and Superman going on here. So you do see how these have the ones with the lines and then it flows into the regular ones with the logos and the name of the hero on top. So starting off with Joker and then into Superman, Felt appropriate to go into Shazam after that, and Flash, and Zoom because of the logos there, and then into Green Arrow, into Green Lantern, into Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Again, a little bit of color coordination, a little bit of release order going on there. I liked the three greens together, and then Wonder Woman, because I actually used to have the regular Wonder Woman, or I'm sorry, the classic Wonder Woman, which was the MDX exclusive, over here, so that mirrored that pretty nicely when the two of them were like that, but since I added the Golden Age Batman 2-pack, that sort of change that arrangement a little bit and now basically the entire mdx shelf on top is batman characters with uh, a few random miscellaneous ones on top so this is the nightmare batman and then the gotham by gaslight joker which did make my top 10 this past year right next to the regular joker sort of how the shadowland daredevil goes into the vigilante daredevil from netflix so you start to see how the arrangement sort of works in my mind where i kind of want similar characters kind of near or next to each other maybe even sharing a space so that there's a bit of a flow going into it. And then, yeah, here's the classic Wonder Woman, which used to be over here, but these, these two packs take up so much space on the MDX shelf that I just had to figure out something to make them all work. Fortunately, my black mask did come with a crease, and so did this one, weirdly enough. So, I mean, it bothers me a little bit, but, I mean, it's the boxes. What are you really going to do? Um, and one thing that does actually annoy me, speaking of OCD, is how the Supreme Knight... Well, really, starting with Ascending Knight and, and Sovereign Knight, they would have the Bat logos up here on the top near the name. And then for some reason on Supreme Knight, they started putting it in the middle here. So if you have these two next to each other as you're trying to flow them from like early Batman to middle Batman to old Batman, all of a sudden the logo changes to like the middle. So having the spines next to each other just really annoyed me like that. So I had to put the Supreme Knight two pack with Black Mask in the middle to kind of buffer that. Just a minor annoyance, but that's how my brain works, honestly. Um, and then here's Batman Beyond, which, again, has that same logo on top. So I like the flow of that as well. And then moving down, like I said, that's the, the first shelf that I kind of base everything off of. And then we move down into another straight-up, basically, Batman shelf with Dr. Fate at the end, kind of mirroring how Spider-Man 2099 kind of is the odd one out on his side there as well. Dr. Fate also used to be up here. So it used to be classic Wonder Woman and Dr. Fate right there. And then, obviously, this is a two-pack, so it took both of those slots. We had to rearrange things. So, again, as it flows from this top one, Joker on the far right, Clown Prince of Crime Joker here on the bottom. Again, so all my Jokers are basically sharing the right side over here as we flow down. And then we move into Catwoman and the three different versions of Batman who have the logo on the correct part of the spine. It would be so annoying if they had moved this up or if these were up here before and then this one got suddenly moved down. I like how that flows a little bit better. And then into some more Batman villains, Deathstroke and KG Beast, Two-Face, Harley Quinn, and again, Dr. Fate, kind of weird, odd one out. As we move into the third from the bottom here, 
I had to kind of break it up because Thanos is such a big box and there's so many more Marvel releases, at least box wise. I couldn't fit Thanos anywhere on my Marvel shelf. So he's kind of like the flow that he's kind of breeding into the DC shelf a little bit, but it felt appropriate to have the Thanos box next to dark side because of the similarities in the character and all that. Um, and also sort of next to black bolt for that cosmic synergy there. But that does bother me a little bit, but again, we got to just make it work because I am basically out of space. I need a whole nother Billy. It seems like at this point. Um, so yeah, Stark side is there. Here's the Gordon with the bat signal. Again, that oversized box taking up the majority of that shelf. I used to have it actually up on the MDX shelf before I got enough MDXs to fill this up because they are the same box height. So that did work for a little bit, but once I ran out of space there, he had to move down here. And then I recently re-picked up the original Dark Knight Returns Batman, one of the original releases from the Mezco 112 Collective Standard Edition. But as you can see, like I wanted, like I did with Frankenstein, I want to fill this final spot right here with a PX version of the Dark Knight Returns Batman. So. Uh, if somebody's uh, got a line on that, I'm putting out the APB. Help me fill this literal hole in my collection. Let's make it happen. And then as we move down, here is more of the PX stuff in the tins, arranged kind of by how originally they had the logos here. So we got the gray moving into the red, which I liked for the co uh, color synergy right there. And then Deathstroke into Black Adam again for color synergy. But then they stopped doing full on logos for the px releases and just started doing the you know normal font across all of them in the different colors so that's how that begins to flow is the black and gold into black adams black and gold and then green lantern for the black against the yellow and then the two batman the three batmans actually that all have their logo in their appropriate color and then finally harley quinn playing for keeps edition down there and then just as we did with the marvel stuff all the live action dc is on the bottom shelf down here with the Batman vs. Superman releases, I just have the one front-facing and the rest of them are behind there because all the spine is the same, just like with Thor Ragnarok, and those move into the shelf, and then that moves into the Justice League stuff, into the Wonder Woman live-action Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad, and then the Christopher Reeves Superman, my number two for 2021, if you just saw my top ten video. And now we are at the top of the bookcases, going into the Rumble Society collection, and you can see I'm starting with Gomez here on the left, and I actually have the six-foot-tall wall hangable cutout Gomez so I can uh, have that just lurking in the background there he's holding some of the uh, different lanyards and badges that I've gotten from Mezco over the years you know through the different swag bundles and all that stuff so he's there displaying those as we move into the Rumble Society stuff which starts with Gomez on the left appropriately at the Stealth Ops the Secret Agent Gold Mez this one is actually an early Mezco exclusive collector club bundle that has like a Mezit, an old school Gomez, a little living dead doll, just uh, a bunch of little tchotchke stuff from some of these early collector club packs that they used to do. Uh, I don't really have it displayed. It's all still sitting in the box, but I do like how it has the spot varnish logo on there to kind of mirror how some of the 112 logos are on the solid black boxes there. Here's the classic Agent Gomez and then the Lone Roach moving into the Hazard Squad stuff with the Moss Squatch appropriately on top of them there. And this is the year, I guess it was 2020 into 2021, where they really started doing that sort of shoe box display with the art on the front. Minimalistic boxes, but I do like that they include an extra sticker. So if you have, I don't know, a spot to display those stickers, you can do that. I don't, so I just have them all front facing so you can see which one they are. And all of my army builders, like the House of Golden Skulls and the Black Skulls Death Brigade, I have all the boxes like tucked in behind there so you only really see one of them at a time. I guess the only thing that isn't 112 here is King Kong, but I decided to put him next to Moss Squatch. It felt appropriate because they're on that same body. So he's kind of the odd one out there, but once I get stuff to replace it, perhaps a couple more of the Krieg sets, those will be able to move and I can move King Kong into like maybe the miscellaneous section. Again, I am out of space on these bookcases, so I'm just making them fit wherever I can and where it's somewhat aesthetically pleasing. So yeah, some of the repeats are behind these as well. We got two rows deep of these boxes as well. White Skull Agent, one of my favorites, but couldn't put it in the top because he's so rare. A couple of the Krieg sets that I've accrued. I still need two more of these two packs and one more Murder Hornet so that I can have the quote-unquote accurate Krieg army as seen in the mini comics. So luckily some people in the community have been helping me out with that. Hopefully I should have those soon. Maybe my next year's update will have the complete Krieg army to show off here on the collection update. And that moves into the Nosferatu, which actually has uh, glow-in-the-dark elements to this box, like Nosferatu skin and the Nosferatu logo glow-in-the-dark. So that's nice when I shut out the lights at night to go to bed and you see that bright Nosferatu logo there. Into the Pink Skulls Death Brigade, which 
have been uh, in the news as of late. I don't know if you guys saw, but Pink Skulls, they're back. And that is the five points Pink Skull set that came in the Casino La Cucaracha box. Felt appropriate to have that right next to the regular Pink Skulls. And then just like on the left here, when we started the display, it starts with all the Gomez tins right there. It felt appropriate to end the bookshelf here with some of the Rumble Society tins. So we've got Captain Nemo and Vapor and Nosferatu here as we flow back down into that third shelf that we started with, which are the regular Rumble Society releases in that magnetic enclosure box with the art on the inside. It's the same box on the outside, so I like the uniformity of having them all right here on one shelf. This is you know stuff like the single release Krig, the Hawk P40, the two Baron Bens, the two Doc Nocturnals, and that includes, since Doc Nocturnal is here on the right, moving into the Doc Nocturne wall, there's the accessory set, the Phantom Knights membership kit from Doc Nocturnal. And that pretty much takes us to the end of the box display. So I'll move back one more time so you guys can get a nice wide angle of how all of this is arranged. It's a bit of a cacophony of light and sound and color, but I really like how we create a bit of a collage of all the logos and all the different properties across the Mezco 112 Collective. And I really like having it as my background. How do you guys display your boxes? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious to see. Does anyone have an elaborate box display like this, or are you just uh, throw them in the closet and forget about them kind of collector? Let me know, but there you go. That is the wide shot of the box display. Let's go ahead and move into the Detolf displays.